If you like this video, please consider supporting the Otokana channel over on Patreon. Thank you. Welcome to the second episode of the Color Theory 101 series. In this episode, we are going to cover the split primary palette. Just like the first episode, this isn't the main part of using color theory to create a palette for bright colors and easy color mixes, but it is fundamental knowledge that's going to be really useful to you along the way. It also answers the question I get asked a lot, which is what is the minimum colors you can have in a palette or what would you choose if you could only choose six colors for a palette? My answer has always been the split primary palette. And in this video, I'm going to show you why that is the best possible combination of colors if you are only limited to six colors. There are plenty of different ways to put together a palette and I'm sure that there'll be lots of people who disagree with me. That's okay. They just have a different priority in their limited number palettes to I do. My personal priority in putting together any palette is to get the brightest mixes of color as possible. And the reason why I prioritize that is because if you want a more muted color, then you can totally mute a bright color. And I will show you how to do that in a later episode. But if you start off with muted colors or colors that won't produce bright mixes, then you can't brighten them afterwards. You can lighten them by adding water, but you cannot make the color more bright. Whereas if you are intending on creating a travel palette for specific uses, it's great to throw in some convenience colors like green, yellow ochre, and something dark brown like burnt umber to make your life easier. However, for me, if I could only pick six colors, then I would definitely lean towards having bright color mixes first because you can create browns and yellow ochres and all those neutral tones from bright colors, which again, I will show you in a later episode. So we go right back to the basics of color mixing and primary colors. A lot of us were taught in schools that primary colors consisted of red, yellow and blue and that you can make all the colors in the world with just red, yellow and blue. But I'm sure you remember in school as a child that when you use red, yellow and blue, you got some really muted, what some people may call muddy colors, especially if you're mixing the violets or the greens. Now, there is another set of primaries called the cyan, magenta and yellow or the CMY trio. You'll most frequently see the CMY trio of colors in your printers. If you just lift open your printer, then you will have these three plus black as your ink cartridge. Now, what constitute as real actual primary colors when it comes to painting is the most controversial and passion raising, shall we say, of topics in art. This video isn't going to be about which is the actual primary color that you should use, but instead I'm going to show you the pros and cons of each trio and then show you why using both actually is the best method in getting the brightest color mixes. First, I'm going to show you what color mixes you can get from the red, yellow, blue trio as well as the CM white trio. We've painted the color mixes with the red, yellow, blue and the cyan magenta yellow. I don't know about you, but I'm so familiar with these colors shocking me as a child when they show you color wheels like this and they tell you if you use red, yellow and blue, then you can make this. And then this happens. I just didn't understand why these colors didn't look anything like these. However, the one great advantage of the red, yellow, blue palette is how bright 
the oranges are. They are perfect for mixing the oranges because of course orange is a warm color. So if you use a warm yellow with a warm red, then you're gonna get nice, clear, warm oranges. However, green being cool color, if you use a warm yellow and a warm blue, then you are not gonna get cool greens. And in fact, you get the opposite, you get very muted greens. Same with violet. Violet is a little bit weird, which I will explain in a little bit. But if you use a warm red and a warm blue to create something that is more cool than warm, then you are also going to get very muted violets. On the other hand, when you use cool colors, so we have the cool yellow, the cool red and the cool blue, you get amazing bright greens and pretty good violets because these two are more leaning towards the cool than the warm and therefore if you use a cool yellow with a cool blue you're going to get nice bright cool greens and if you use a cool red with a cool blue then you're going to get nice cool violets however you remember that the orange is a warm color and if you use a cool red and a cool blue to try and create orange it's going to be more muted than if you used the warm yellow and warm red so for bright oranges this is better and for bright greens this palette is better when it comes to violets though, it's a little bit of a different story. Orange is clearly a warm color and the greens are clearly a cool color, but violet is kind of somewhere in the middle. And I've painted the four possible combinations of using the warm red and cool red and the warm blue and the cool blue to show you how you can get the brightest mixes. Because violet is definitely leaning more towards the cool if you use a warm red you're automatically going to get muted colors and it doesn't matter if you use a warm blue or cool blue it's still going to be muted using a cool red is a much better option and as you can see these two are much brighter than these two but because violet is somewhere in the middle between a red and a blue if you use a cool red and a cool blue, you do get a pretty decent bright violets. But the best way you can get the brightest violets is if you use a cool red and a warm blue. The difference is a lot more slight than, say, how different the greens were. But if you want the brightest violets, then mixing a cool red and a warm red, I find, gives the best result. So in these two palettes, we have a palette that gives great oranges, a palette that gives great greens and a way that you can get bright violets out of these two. So to combine all the good sides of these combinations of colors, what you can use is the split primary palette for the brightest possible color mixes we basically take the two palettes the red yellow and blue palette with the cyan magenta yellow palette and take those three colors from each palette and combine it into a six color palette and what we do is we look at the primary so the red yellow and blue and split it into warm red and cool red warm yellow cool yellow and warm blue and cool blue and this is why the palette is called the split primary palette because you are literally splitting the primary colors into two colors the greatest thing about this palette is that it ensures you the brightest color mixes all the way around the color wheel so that you don't have a surprise muted color or as some people might say surprise mud colors to create bright oranges because it's a warm we mix warm red with the warm yellow to create the brightest cool greens we mix cool yellow with cool blue and to create the brightest violets we mix the cool red with the warm blue this is why this six color palette is the most efficient way of being able to produce the 
widest range of bright colors with the minimum number of paints. And this is what I use to create any palette. I first make sure that the palette will have a warm and cool of the three primaries. And then I go about adding other colors to the palette that will be convenient for what I'm creating the palette for. And a little tip for when you come to create your own travel palette with these colors, or you're just trying to get used to this warm and cool colors and whether you are supposed to be using a warm or cool combination of primaries to create a particular secondary colors it can get really confusing i do have a tip for you when you come to design your own palette if you are using a travel palette and perhaps you're using pants so you can design your own layout i highly recommend laying out your six primary colors like this. I do see a lot of people and I used to do this myself of having say the cool primaries up here and warm primaries down here or vice versa. And that's great until you come to mix your secondaries and it gets confusing as to which color you're supposed to mix. Now we all know red and yellow makes an orange, the red and blue will make a violet and yellow and blue will make a green. So that's easy to remember and we don't need a reminder. What we do need reminding is whether you need a warm or a cool yellow and warm or a cool red to make the brightest orange. By laying out in the brightest color pairs rather than in primary sets. It takes that guesswork and trying to remember out for you. We can just mix these two and know we'll get the brightest orange. We can mix these two and get the brightest violets and we can mix these two to get the brightest green. The guesswork and trying to remember and maybe making a mistake is all taken out for you. And then you arrange whatever other colors you want in your palette. So that is the split primary palette. But what about the colors you're supposed to actually use? I know as a beginner, the hardest thing when trying to learn these color theories or just trying to understand how to make colors, the thing I struggled the most was knowing what colors I'm supposed to be using for these special palettes. And so I'm gonna take that guesswork out for you as well and recommend you some colors that I personally like to use for these split primary colors. Now, they are not the only choices out there and they are leaning towards more of the transparent colors rather than the opaque colors, but it will be a good starting point for you in figuring out what colors you want to have in your own palette. The simplest way, if you just want a one shop, one button click experience in getting a split primary palette, is to go for the Daniel Smith's Essential Colors set. It's a set of six tubes of fire milk colors and it is the perfect split primary set. I always recommend this set for anyone that is wanting to do a split primary or learn about color theory just because it takes the guesswork and the stress of trying to figure out the which six colors you're supposed to get out for you and you can just buy one set and you will have all the colors you need. If you are wanting a Daniel Smith colors but you don't want to get the set or you can't have the set, I do suggest an alternative that is a little bit more transparent. One of the problem with this six color set for me personally because I really, really like transparent colors over more opaque colors is that the new gamboge is a more opaque color and Daniel Smith has much more transparent colors on offer. The other issue I have is the French ultramarine in the set. A lot of people seem to be okay with it, but I don't know if I just got a dud tube, but my French ultramarine behaves very strangely. So I prefer using their ultramarine blue instead of their French ultramarine. 
and these are the colors i recommend if you are putting together a daniel smith set of your own for holbeins i recommend these following six colors for your split primary palette and me personally i use a combination of these colors from holbein and dennis smith in my palette for sennelier i recommend these six colors and for Shuminke, i recommend these six colors if you do decide to explore your own options in what colors you want for your own split primary palette what i recommend is take the color i've recommended as a reference point so for example in the daniel smith range i recommended hansa yellow light as your cool primary yellow so what you do is you go to a color chart and most watercolor catalogs arrange their colors in a chromatic order then you find the color that i referenced so here is hansa yellow light and then if you pick a color that's reasonably close to that color then you're likely to get it right and in fact as a yellow light would be another color i would recommend so is the quinothesalone yellow and and maybe the bismuth vanadate yellow as well so go for maybe a couple on either side but definitely stop if you notice a big change in color for example i do recommend permanent red as a good warm red option but here you notice that the temperature changes dramatically it cools down so in this case i would go back upwards and pick colors from around here I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about what the split primary palette is and the advantages of using the split primary palette. The split primary palette is also useful for when you are buying a set of watercolors that has already been put together by somebody else. Just check that they have the warms and cool versions of the three primary colors because then you will always be able to mix bright colors from that set if it doesn't then you might find it a little bit harder work and having to rely on the set having bright secondary colors as well so for me this is the most efficient set of colors you can have for brightest color mixes of course if your priority in designing a palette is different from having bright colors then please do feel free to completely ignore what i said and do what's right for you now the split primary palette is the most efficient way but of course when you come to do lots of painting it's going to get a little bit boring having to mix your oranges and your greens and your violets all the time from these six colors so in the next episode i am going to show you how i use the color wheel and the 12 colors within the color wheel to decide and design any palette when space is not an issue and i can have at least 12 colors i always use this method and we are going to have a lot of fun learning about color theory and color mixes so that you can have a stress-free color mixing experience and full control of the process so i hope you are up for that in the next episode Thank you so much for watching this video. If this video was useful to you, then please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.